its time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us, all you good-looking people. I, I have to show you a gift that was given to me, and it's appropriate for today's interview. Herman, I can't believe you brought this on. Yeah, yeah. Can you get a close-up? Okay, show me what camera. Okay, right there. Can you get a close-up of this? See, it says, countdown to Obama's last day, <laughs> 1 2013 So there's 186 days, Somebody. Uh, 14 hours, 56 minutes, and one second. Oh, no seconds right now. Pretty cute, huh? but look at look at what look what they gave me on the back of it. It's a credit card with the communist leader, and it says, <laughs> "Government master, uh, spin like there's no tomorrow." Card, and over here it's got the national debt as 13 billion when this was given to me, but now it's about 16 billion, probably climbing, and. Uh, Trillion. Uh, or, or, I mean trillion. <laughs> it's hard to even think about that. Yeah. But anyway, it's kind of cute. I just thought trillion. I'd show you that. I just thought I'd show you that. Anyway, <laughs> do you know I just heard yesterday that 30% of conservative Christians are not registered to vote? Uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing. For some reason, they just don't and, think it's And you conservative Christians necessary. that are watching this telecast will probably just gibber and talk about what's happening in the government after, you know, if perchance we see the downfall of America another four years. And you will be chattering and talking. And I think I said it to your brother, I said, people that don't vote should have their mouths sewed shut. So they can't talk at all because they have nothing to say. Just a word to you. Well, hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to go. Oh, this direction right here. But I just had that on my mind. Yes, today, evidently you today did. we have Steve uh, Johnston yes. is with us. He's written a book, Tea Party Culture oh, War. This is appropriate, especially for what I just showed you. He's uh, experienced in Christian ministry, law, economics, and corporate finance. He's earned a Juris Doctorate degree from Western State University of Law and a theological degree from Calvary Chapel School of Ministry. He served as a chaplain in Orange County, Los Angeles, as well as Pelican Bay in California. That's Maximum, maximum Security Prison. And he's wow. six foot four and growing. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> this, this guy is tall, and it's good to have you. Good to be yeah, here. Thank you so much. I want, I How long did it take you to put this together? Oh, I think a lifetime. Seriously? I, I have about 3,000 books at home. And so I've just been praying and thanking, and I guess God kind of prepared me for that book. So it's kind of a, a, a lifetime. It's interesting. I, I interviewed uh, Pat Williams recently, and uh, on, on the book that he wrote, and he he said he has 700 books of the type that he wrote in his library. So he read them all to research for the book that he was writing. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. The problem with my book is, as you probably know, is that it deals with a lot of different areas: finance, Christianity, even I get into prophecy. And Wine Press, my publisher, said. Why are you bringing prophecy into the Tea Party? But it's, uh, it's, it, it, I think it all comes with your uh, world view. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is just words from, from a bio apparently written by you. The Tea Party movement represents American ta taxpayers who are tired of car career politicians who make a living buying votes with taxpayers' hard-earned money. They are frustrated with current economic politics and feel abused by both the Republican and Democrat politicians. They are fed up with watching the U.S. dollar take the slow path of destruction from, from the imposition of inflation, sloth, theft, and waste. Pretty well said. Thank you. And how long did it take you to get your law degree? Uh, I think it was two years. Boy, you are smart. Yeah. 
<laughs> did, did, did you pass the bar? Uh, no, I was interested in, in corporate law. I was in, interested in, in mergers and acquisitions, so I never really planned to be a trial attorney. My area was uh, more corporations. So you never got into lying or anything like that? <laughs> just, just, I just throw that out there. <laughs> but uh, you, you say, starting in the book, crossing the Rubicon. What does that mean? Uh, well, give us a little history. Well, uh, the Ro Roman generals weren't allowed to cross th certain uh, areas. They weren't supposed to go to, to Rome. And once they crossed the Rubicon, as an example, then it was considered treason. And uh, so that's one thing that Caesar did. And he brought his army in. And, but uh, I think I think in it with America, we're reaching a, a path where, it, where it, I think right now it's about 50-50. About half the people pay taxes, half don't. Uh, I think the Democratic Party has been, I mean, there used to be Southern Christian Democrats, but now it's being, I think, taken over by uh, extremists, hardcore people that don't go to church and so forth. Well, you know, it, 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 they're taken over by the unions, basically, yeah. and, and it's amazing because I was raised in Chicago, of all places. Mm -hmm. Born in K Kentucky, my dad had a business in Chicago. And I remember the union leaders were the thugs, the baseball bats in their hand, man, and if you mess with them, they busted your knees or your head. And now they do the same thing, but with politics backing them up. Well, Chicago's been notorious as a, it, with the Daly family and, and uh, tough politics, uh, hard, hardcore oh, politics. Oh, absolutely. It's a long history. Yeah. It's amazing. And now they just dress in nice suits and neckties mm -hmm. and, right. and have the power of the government right, right. behind them. Right. Yeah. So uh, you talk about worldview of politics and religion. Okay, give us a lesson on what worldview, what that term entails. What does it actually mean? Well, your world, there's a, there's a, I believe there's a, a a spiritual conflict, a, uh, a, a, a war, a culture war. And the culture war is divided between two extreme positions. Uh, one position is that you, a uh, Christian position, uh, people go to church, uh, you know, even even Mormons and, 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 and Jews, uh, it, in the old days in movies, you would, you would have back in the 50s and 60s, you would have a censorship. You'd have a priest and a, a Jewish rabbi and a, and a Protestant, and they would censor a, a movie, and if it didn't pass muster, it couldn't be distributed. Uh, so anyway, one side you have absolute, you have a people who believe in absolute values that come from God. The other side you have liberals, uh, humanists, uh, people who just believe there are, there's no right or wrong, and that society can establish right and wrong. And, and so I think I think when it gets down to it, there's a power struggle in America, and it's, it looks like it's about 50-50. It's yeah. razor thin, yeah. and it could go either way. And if, if we go towards humanism and, and uh, really, to me, paganism and uh, New Age and, and more of Obama, then I feel that it's a, our country is uh, doomed. I have never in my lifetime, and I'm 73, watched a nation and America specifically moved towards socialism at mock speed. That means they had all of this in place the day he took that oath. It had it to be. Going you can't, that way you can't that. move this fast yeah. without having, you know, it's like a chess game and you have all the pawns there and you already know the moves. Yeah, but go, go back a little bit to Dewey and the uh, the state-run schools teaching socialism. Oh, it's and, been coming. And, yes. and Harvard was taken oh, over yeah. by Harvard was taken over by Marxists a long time ago. Yeah. So I mean, it's it we're it it looks pretty. I mean, but I didn't. I've never seen the door open and say, "Come on in." Did you? I ever mean, th you think of Reagan for goodness' right. sakes. I mean, with his philosophy and what he what he spoke about. Right. I, I have his books and his quotes and even some of the tapes that he. Uh, Did you ever think you would see the day that the uh, president of the United States would be for same-sex marriage, men getting married and women getting married? Did you ever see, think you would see that day? Well, it's interesting you should say that because that other little article I brought was the comic books now 
uh, the the heroes. They've just brought out one comic book, and the two uh, heroes, two men, are getting married on the front cover of the comic book. You know, when 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 my wife and I lived in Orange County, Newport Beach, we requested that our our daughter stop going, whose name is Faith, stop going to these perpetual sex education classes. We were the only parents of 2,000 kids that requested this, and they didn't know what to do with our child, so they sent her to the, to the, to the library, and the other kids made fun of her. And, uh, but you know, now in California, you're not allowed to do that because those kids belong to the state. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Christian and you say, I do not want my parent, to, uh, my, my child to learn about uh, homosexuals and all this stuff, it's, it's too bad. We, we own your kids. That's and right. they have to go to that class. We know best. We know best. The cultural war, what does that imply? It's not a war so much in a, in a literal sense of uh, what happened is the communists discovered that they weren't going to be able to, that uh, Karl Marx thought that proletariat was going to take over the bourgeoisie and there was going to be a, a, an actual physical uh, revolt. And, and, that Marxists saw that wasn't going to happen. So what they found out is that they need to do it through uh, elections, and they but they need to st stop the Christian church. They need to stop people of faith that believe in the Bible. They need to undermine cultures in Germany and in Europe and, and now the United States. And so your book covers this. I, so. I, I cover that, and 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 it it, it discusses it discusses the issue of. Uh, of attacking families, attacking uh, family values, um, and and attacking the church. It's a war between good and evil. That's evil, right. Exactly. And you know, there's in my book, I have a lot of ex uh, big, expensive words like postmodernism and liberalism. By the and, way, it's it, it's a great read. You will be able to get through this. Actually, you won't put it down. Oh, thank that's, you. That's that's the way it'll go because you start reading it, and <laughs> you're going to have to go right through it. And that's what I like. I like a book that oh, captures thank you, your thank attention. You. But what I was going to say is there's, there's a lot of words that some people stu stumble over. But to make get it simple, all those words, postmodernism, liberalism, all that means is just lack of faith in God's yeah. word. That's right. Just lack of faith. Our founding fathers, can you imagine if we could go, okay, we are back to America. Take a look around. Watch what comes out of the White House, all the politicians then critique me today on what you see. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would go, where am I? What is this? You know, it's not a racial issue. Um, uh, Obama likes to compare himself to our forefathers and so forth, but it's not a black-white issue yeah. because I've been involved with prison ministry and we as Christians, we work brothers with brothers and it's not a racial issue. I don't have a problem with Obama obviously being black. But, but it's interesting, but, but, but it's, it's, it's it's interesting why they paint you that way. Right. If you have an opinion other than uh, the, the party line. But if you, if you study Saul Alinsky and the, and the, uh, their, that, tech, that, that technique, is Obama can't run on his record, so he has to flip it to, a, to a, an ethnic thing or a, a class warfare, the rich against the poor against the rich yeah. and so forth. What he's trying to do, He's trying to get a, a, a group, and it, it's, it's working pretty good because he's got about 50% of the vote, but he's, he's trying to get minorities, Hispanics, blacks, women, yeah. uh, and try and pit them against uh, white males. And, and he's, he's, it's about, fit, and then people on unemployment and so forth. So he's, he's, it's, he's, he's done a pretty good job, but it's a, it's a very evil concept yeah. because we're all Americans. Well, the, the people that are protesting, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the videos where they put a microphone in front of their mouth and say, do you know why you're out here? Do you know what that sign means and so forth? And they have no clue. And many of them will say, well, I don't know, I just, somebody paid me to be here. Mm -hmm. And then they check a little further and they find out it's a union uh, or, uh, or some connected uh, Soros or somebody that, that has paid the tab, but they're out there making it look like we are protesting because we are upset. Whereas the Tea Party actually knew why they were there. Can I tell you a quick story about unions? Yes. When I was going to seminary, I, I was driving a bus to make a living, and, and there was a union protest thing at a building site. And they hired, like you said, they hired these people down in, in downtown LA, bottom of Orange County, but they used the non-union bus because it was cheaper. 
I thought that was kind of sure. funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because they, they had you these wouldn't call them hypocrites, would you? <laughs> but these people weren't in the union, yeah. and they used a non, they used me, which was non-union, to take to a, a protest site on unions. Is the Tea Party dead? You keep I, hearing that. Now. I don't, you know, people keep saying that that's a bunch of baloney. First of all, I don't think Mitt Romney can win without bringing a conservative Tea Party person aboard with yeah, him, like yeah. Marco Rubio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, look at what about the local? In, in Oregon, we've got a, a congressman running his Tea Party. He's a Christian, not just a libertarian type Ron Paul thing. This guy's a, he's a Christian and he's. Uh, and he's, he may win in Oregon, in my district, 8th yeah. district, or 4th district. And so it, it's it's also local uh, yeah. elections. But, oh, absolutely. But it when starts there. I would, before we finish, so I do also want to talk not just about politics and and the economy, but I, I want to talk about our schools and our kids, if, yeah. if you get a chance. I'd yeah, like in to, fact, yeah. I'm going right there. Okay. Hitler tossed the Frankfurt School out, right. and then their philosophy moved to America. Start there. Yeah, the, there were a lot of Jewish people involved with the, with the communists and so forth. And when, when Hitler came to power, uh, a lot of these people had to flee. And so where do they go? They go to America where freedom is. And a lot of them ended up at uh, Columbia University where Obama actually went. And some of them went to Harvard. And, and what, they, what, they, what they decided, what they found out is that, like I say, is that they couldn't, uh, they couldn't overturn capitalism physically with a war. So what they did, like I said, is what they've done, in, and I say it in the book, is they've attacked our church, our family, our country, moral values. And uh, they make fun of, the, uh, of Christian values. And, and so it, it, the, the casualties of this spiritual war or cultural war are our children. Yeah. And, and if you teach our children that they're animals and that, they, that, uh, that we're animals and that there's no right or wrong, then you lose control of the schools. Okay, now you've got to send, as parents, your children to public schools. So as much as you teach them at home, home you send them to... Homeschooling. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, if not everybody can do that. Every, you know, right. Some people have jobs, they can't do it. I've got an answer. Okay. The answer is the uh, voucher system. Because if, if the taxpayers who pay the taxes, if they could choose which school there would be a mass exodus out of the public schools because Dewey, the, the public schools are not teaching kids yeah. to yeah. Re reading writing. That's well, why they, they won't do it. They had, they uh, had no, that's, uh, why, that's why that's the labor why union, the, the teachers union exactly. didn't want it. They had that system in Washington, D.C. when Obama came in. Mm -hmm. He withdrew it. Yeah. Of course. And, and the minorities were loving it. They were getting that's a good right. education for the first time going that's to a right. school that's that right. actually had competent right. teachers it, and it's not the number of uh, of teachers and students you can have a you can have a teacher with 70 kids in the classroom but it's your worldview it's yeah. your it's yeah. your it's your it's, technique it's all about the it's authority worldview. it's authority yep uh, moving right along financial Armageddon the Keynesian uh, economics that's that's President Obama's favorite right economic and, Rep and Republicans. Nixon was uh, said we're all Keynesians now. Okay, if you if you go back to when the Tea Party started, uh, Larry Kudlow is a man on financial channel. He pits people with different worldviews and they they argue. And he, he had Rick Santelli, who's on the Chicago Commodities Exchange, and Steve Leisman. They were arguing about bailouts and so forth. I observed that uh, Rick Santelli, who's a conservative, he he keeps mentioning Adam Smith. Frederick Bastiat, these are Christian men, men who believed in the Bible. Steve Leisman, he's a total sold out Keynesian economist. Most economists today, well, to Explain what that is. That's what I'm going to do yeah. is, so John Maynard Keynes, to make a long story sh short, I mean, he happens to be, had to be a homosexual, but he was a socialist, anti-God, anti-Christian. Yeah. And, and what he, he what fit he, fit right in today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what he basically did, he told a lie. He, he violated all the principles of economics. What he said is you can stimulate the economy by printing money, which is a total lie. I mean, it's yeah. been tried many times. In fact, Rome fell by debasing the currency. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's stupidity. And when I went to, when I was at San Jose State, I was majoring in economics, and I asked my professors, the PhDs at state school, I said, what do you think of von Mises, the Austrian School of Economics? And they said, Who's von Mises? They didn't know who he was, and so I, you know, I was, 
I, the, a lot of these people at Harvard and, and so forth, they don't even, they, they have PhDs, but they don't study the opposing world views. They only, they brainwash themselves in Keynesian yeah. economics. Yeah. And we are going that direction. It, it, you know, go online, look this up, and be informed, because it is amazing the direction we're going. And this kind of thing, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. A few years ago, we'd go, what is that? Why would I even want to look it up? But it's been prepared for us for what we're experiencing today. And let me tell you, if we have it another four years, God bless America. Because we're going to be on our knees. Because sometimes, you know, hardship does create people reading the Word of God. Restore staying faith. On, yeah, and when they're dragging us out of the churches or whatever, we'll be praying and... Mm -hmm. And you won't be worried about denominations or what color is standing next to you or what's happening. When that bob wires around all of, all of us, we're, we're I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say. By the way, what church do you go to? Oh, you're charismatic. Oh, do, what are you? Oh, okay. Oh, you you no. We're going to be born again believers in the same area. So it's coming, folks. I'm telling you. We you talk about cha uh, chapter eight, the welfare state. What does that actually mean? We hear that term thrown away. Well, what it is, if people don't believe in in uh, God, and and I think Francis Schaeffer says that if they, if reality is based on energy and matter shaped by chance, which is evolution, then what happens is man becomes takes the place of God, mm -hmm. and instead of just trusting in God and relying on God and, and self reliance, the the government becomes takes the place of God and provides all of our needs. Yeah. So if a girl goes out and she's promiscuous, she gets uh, pregnant, then uh, the government will take care of that person, It'll give them food, give them a place to live, take care of them. They don't need their parents. They don't need to go to the church and ask for help. They just, they have the government to take care of them. And we become the welfare state, you know, which is fine to a certain point, but when you have too many people on entitlement and, and taken from the, the, the public trough, it destroys your, the country's credit, and eventually uh, you, a country falls. Wow. Uh, civilization as we know it, coming to a close? Well, there's a lot of people that argue and so forth, but to me there's clear signs that in Ezekiel 38 it says in the last days that God is going to bring the Jews back to the to the yeah. promised land, and they're going back to the promised land, and so I believe we're in the last days. I think the the seven churches in Asia Minor, Revelation two and three, uh, there were lots of churches in in, in Asia Minor, but they, but I believe God selected those seven churches because they're kind of a preview of church history, and if you change the order of those churches, then it doesn't fit his history. But I believe the seventh uh, church was Laodicea, the rule of the people. I think we're, that pretty well describes uh, the world today, lukewarm Christianity, rule of the people. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Which Bible do you want to use? What, what, you know, it's kind of a smorgasbord religion, a little bit of Hinduism, yeah. a little yoga, a little New Age, and it's a... Uh, yeah. Well, you know, everybody is saying, why don't the Republicans compromise or even, you know, I'm not Republican, Democrat, uh, uh, I mean, it's say, uh, Democrats say the thing, why don't the Republicans compromise and, and, and everybody is saying compromise. But to me, if you don't have a specific stand and understand what you believe and stand for what you believe, compromise is lukewarm. That's right. I mean, how, how do you explain it? And usually we're, one side compromises and the other side... We're not on a pleasure cl cruise. We're, we're warriors for the Lord. We're here for a purpose. We're, we're supposed to be the preservative salt. If, yeah. we're not, if we're not being the salt, you mentioned Hitler and, and, and the Germans. You know that when, the, when those railroad cars would go by the church and they would stop and the kids would be screaming, the, 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 the people would sing louder so they didn't hear those people screaming? Because they knew where the train was with headed. With a Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger was a was a socialist, a communist, but she was anti-church, anti anti. And she uh, was a racist. Family. And she let her some of her kids. She was a racist, yeah. eugenics, and she let her kids die from malnutrition. And and uh, uh, the the our taxpayer money is going to Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood, and Planned Parenthood is backing Obama and giving the Democrats money to you run for it's it's you you, yeah. you scratch my back. I'll, where are we as Christians when we allow the public schools? 
to tell the kids that they get abortions, have have sex, and, 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 and maybe you're a lesbian, excuse me, maybe you're a homosexual. We as Christians, where have we been? It's like, it's like, well, we're, it's like, uh, I mean, all the abortions and all the, these uh, Planned Parenthood stuff. Where are we? I, we're just silent. We're going to be held accountable, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. And even people, I guarantee, that are watching right now are getting ready to email Linda Opsel. <laughs> just tell her name <laughs> about some of the things I've said. But it's because what we're seeing right here, Christians watching are going, oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, well, I don't. I mean, it's like, take a stand, even if it's over there and not here. Take a cotton picking stand on something for goodness. That's where America has slid to this place we are. You know, you talked about divisions. Now, some people aren't. Some you mentioned conservative Christians. They're not registered. Now, there's some Christians. Thirty million. Some Christians are not going to vote because they say, "Well, Mitt Romney's a Mormon. Yeah. I'm not going to vote yeah, for a Mormon. Right. I got a, I have a socialist and I have a Mormon, so I'm just not going to vote." Yeah. Now, uh, Mitt Romney, you know. Uh, First of all, he's going to stop Planned Parenthood. I don't mean s stop it, but he's going to stop taxpayer money to Planned Parenthood. And, and Obamacare. Yeah, and now, now John... Which is going to be a trillion dollar... Right. Uh, Obamacare. Oh, it's, right. it's going to be trillions of dollars. And, well, you know, his, his, I understand uh, that his economic advisor, uh, John Taylor from Stanford, uh, he's not perfect, but he's a pretty conservative yeah. guy, and he and he believes in reining in the, the uh, Ben Bernanke, getting rid of Ben Bernanke, and and reining in the Federal Reserve. We're out of time. I wish you could have another half hour to yeah. talk. Really, get your copy. This is a great read. It obviously inspired me. <laughs> we need inspiration. But let me tell you, if you're watching today. I don't care what the politics are. I don't care if a Republican, Democrat, uh, uh, Independent, uh, Libertarian, whoever's in there. That's not going to save you. Okay? You're not going to get out of this alive. We're all going to die someday unless the rapture comes. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? That's why he came. That's why he willingly went to the cross, let them drive those spikes in his hands and his feet, dropped that in the ground, probably took the breath out of him, while he pushed himself up to say to those watching, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And he bled and died for your sins and for my sins. All you have to do is say, oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I invite you right now to come into my heart and life. I trust you today as my Lord and my Savior. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Bill Malone of Christian Television Network's Plan Giving Department. Did you know that a will is one of the most important documents that you will ever sign? Yet a majority of Americans die each year with no will, and so the government receives a large percentage of their estate in taxes and fees. We can help you eliminate this loss with our free Guide to Wills and Trusts booklet. Call the number on your screen or go to our website for further information. Your long-range plans deserve special attention. Watch Life Today, weekdays as James and Betty Robison provide real answers to real problems through compelling guests and miraculous testimonies. Witness God's love through inspiration, hope, and life. Join us in making a real difference in our world by changing countless lives and building stronger families. Don't miss Life Today with James and Betty Robison, weekdays on this station. Thirty years ago, I was sitting in front of the television set in my home, and a word was spoken that forever altered my life. And that's exactly what happens every day 
whenever CTN programming is going into people's homes. And that's why it's so important that as believers and as people who really want to change lives, we gather together and give of our resources so that CTN can remain on the air. How can a known poison that exists in our food supply, our medications, and sometimes even...